喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵喵！ Hey everybody, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Today we have got another little addition to our cute little critter drawstring sack collection. We're going to make this chubby little marmalade cat. <laughs> We've linked. The videos in the rest of this series in the description box down below. And while I do go through every single row of the bag build in this tutorial, I do move a little quicker than I usually do. So if you feel you need a little extra help or you want to see the bag construction in a little more detail, then check out any of the other Critter Sack tutorials in the description box down below for a little more help with the bag. Because the bag construction is the same, uh, but it's just the changes in our little odds and ends that we add to our bag that makes it so cat-like. I love having fun with color on the show too, as any of you who've watched the show for any length of time know. So I thought I would make a couple of these cats. I love marmalades, but when I was little I always used to think it would be really neat to have a pet cat that was bright purple. I don't know, kids. <laughs> So I made myself a little purple cat bag too, and I really like how it turned out. Who says a cat bag, or any animal critter sack, has to be the very color they appear in nature? So grab your scraps if you haven't got the exact cat color you, have, you want available, and try making it out of something brightly colored too. It'll still look like a little cat, <laughs> but it'll have kind of a quirky little change to it. One more thing. We're going to play with chunky weight size 5 yarn in today's tutorial, but I wanted to make sure you could see both of these. This one's a chunky weight yarn, this one's a size 4 medium weight yarn, so the type of yarn we usually use. You can substitute chunky weight yarn for all of the critter sacks if you haven't made them before, or you can use the medium weight yarn for all of the critter sacks. You can also interchange those two weighted yarns in the, the build of either of these bags. So for example, I'm mixing chunky weight and regular medium weight together in this bag. I think they both still turn out looking very cat-like. Uh, and like I said, if you want to use that same concept for our previous uh, sack tutorials, you can do that too. Let's grab our hooks, grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a little cat sack together. In order to make our little cat sacks, you're going to want approximately 150 grams or 240 yards of your main cat color. Today I'm using orange. You're also going to want 15 grams or 24 yards each of the pink or the color you use for his nose and his inner ear and green or the color you use for the eyes. Just a small amount of black is going to be required for the pupil as well. I'm using a medium size 4 acrylic weight yarn for most of his pieces, and I'm experimenting with a size 5 chunky weight yarn for the main bag. You can interchange these two weights in this project or use one weight throughout. It's entirely up to you. It'll still look cute. You're going to want some cording or ribbon for the drawstring. Uh, anywhere up to 36 inches or 90 centimeters is enough. And in order to make some whiskers, this is optional, you can use embroidery floss, crochet thread, or a really fine sock weight yarn. Just a small, small amount is all you need to put on his whiskers. We're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and today's hook, regardless of the size of yarn you're using, is a 4.5 millimeter or a 7 in the US and the UK. You can also use a 4.25 millimeter hook, which is also known as a G or a 6 in the US, if you have that one instead. Uh, they're very similar in size, both will be just fine for this project. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, hit that button and the bell and you'll never miss another episode. And once you've got all this together, we can get started. We're going to begin by making our sack, and we're going to start with a cinch circle. Once you've chained one to secure your circle, you're going to work eight single crochet into that circle. Make sure you work them over top of your little short tail so that we can cinch the circle shut when we're done. Please visit our shop and purchase a pattern. It helps support our show and we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. Once you have eight single crochet worked into your cinch circle, grab the short tail, cinch it up nice and tight. We are working in the round, so there is no need to join rows. We are just going to begin each row in the first stitch of the row before. So that was stitch one of row one. We're going to begin stitch one of row two right there. And it's the same for each row going forward for the bottom of our sack. 
we're going to work two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we're going to go from a stitch count of 8 up to a stitch count of 16. At the end of row 2, you should have 16 stitches. We're in still increasing for row 3. We're going to begin row 3 with 2 single crochet into the very first stitch and single crochet once into the stitch after that. That's the little pattern. You're going to repeat that 7 more times all the way around. 2 single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the stitch after that. 8 times in total is what you're going to, or how many times you're going to repeat that little increasing pattern, and that will bring us from a stitch count of 16 up to 24. At the end of row 3, we're up to 24 stitches. We're still increasing. Row 4 and the little repeater pattern that you will repeat 8 times in total goes 2 single crochet into the first stitch of the set. Single crochet once into each of the next two stitches. So two, one, one, two, one, one, all the way around, and that takes us from 24 stitches up to 32. At the end of row four, we have 32 stitches. We're still increasing. We're going to begin row five with two single crochet into the first stitch of the set. And then we're going to single crochet once into each of the next three stitches. You're going to repeat that seven more times or eight times in total and that will take us from a stitch count of 32 all the way up to 40. At the end of row five we're up to 40 stitches. We have one more row of increasing to do, row six. Row six begins with two single crochet into the first stitch and then a single crochet into each of the next four stitches. You're going to repeat that little pattern of two single crochet into the first stitch of the set and a single crochet into each of the next four stitches eight times in total and that will bring us from a stitch count of 40 all the way up to 48. At the end of row six you should be up to 48 stitches. That's it for the increasing. We're going to stick with a 48 stitch count per row going forward. So at the end of row 6 we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch just to fasten off that little circle. And now we're going to do a little bit of post work. We're going to chain 1 to begin row 7 and if you find it difficult to keep track of little things like small chains you might want to mark that with a safety pin or a stitch marker just so you remember to skip it when we get back around to the beginning. To work around the outsides, we're going to be working around the wrong side of the post, of the other side of the post. We're going to bring our hooks from back to front. So back to front through the first stitch and then front to back through the next stitch. And that pops the little tiny post up on our hook. We're going to single crochet around it and the first couple of these in the row might feel a little awkward or a bit tight so be patient and you just continue all the way around. The hook goes from back to front through the very next stitch, front to back through the stitch next to that, and that's sort of an easy way to get the post to pop up on your hook. Single crochet around it, nice and gently, and you're going to work this all the way around. So the stitches are going to sit up on the side that's furthest away from you as you work. So back to front, front to back, there's the post, single crochet. You have 48 stitches, so you will have 48 posts to single crochet around. And when we get back to the beginning, that little chain one right there, we are going to skip. So don't be confused by it. If you can keep track of it with your eyes, then that's fine. If you need to mark it with something, go ahead and do that. Meanwhile, you can work away at single crocheting around each post, and I'll catch back up with you at the end. Once you have 48 single crochet all the way around those posts and you're back to the beginning, it should look something like this. So there's the little chain one that began the row. We're going to skip over top of that. We're going to work directly into that first real single crochet. And now we're just going to single crochet in every single stitch all the way around. So we're going to maintain a stitch count of 48. There will be 48 stitches in each row. 
and you're going to work rows 8, which we're on now, all the way up to 21, just working a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. And what we've done is we've created a nice little base for our little sack to sit on, so it's going to have a nice little flat bottom. And everything from here on out is just working through the regular stitch. No more post work, no more increasing, no decreasing. Just a single crochet in each stitch all the way around. You can work at that for a while and I'll see you at the end of row 21. At the end of row 21, and you know you're at the end because you just have to look down here at the bottom and find that little transition place where we went from the post stitches back to normal crochet. So that little bit right there, I consider that the back. That's where you want your last stitch to land. You can count your rows, so this row above the post stitch right here would be row 8, and you just count them all the way up until you get to 21. And at the end of row 21, we're going to just slip stitch into the next stitch to clean off that row. And now we're going to put in the eyelet row. So this is the row of spaces that we can weave our drawstring through. We're going to chain one into the same stitch that we joined in and chained one out of. So if you pull up, you see the little space there. We're going to half double crochet. And we're going to half double crochet into the next stitch. We're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, find the one after that, and half double crochet into it. And there's your little eyelet, there's your little sort of drawstring space created. We're going to half double crochet into the next stitch, and then we're going to start again. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. Chain one, skip one, half double crochet into each of the next two stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around and that will give you a drawstring row. At the end of that drawstring row, you should be, your last two half double crochet should leave you with one stitch before you get to that little false stitch chain one thing, right, that sits right up against that first half double crochet you made. So we're just going to chain one, skip over top of all of that, and join with a slip stitch to the top of that first half double crochet. That's it for the drawstring row. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, and then weave your tail with your yarn needle in underneath the stitches along that last row. First, we're going to begin with his ears. So we're getting into the little bits that make him into a cat. We're going to start with his ears. You're going to want to make two of these. So you're going to grab your cat color. We're going to begin with a cinch circle. And we're going to work four single crochet into this cinch circle. So we begin very small right at the top of the ear. Once you have four single crochet in that cinch circle, you're going to take your short tail, cinch it up nice and tight. We're working in the round so we're not joining our rows. You're going to work directly into the first stitch of this row and we're going to work a little repeater pattern twice. So we're going to begin with two single crochet worked into that first stitch and it's really really small and tight so take your time. I'm working over my short tail but of course you could always just shove yours to the back. Single crochet once into the next stitch and then repeat. Two single crochet into the next stitch, and single crochet once into the last stitch. So you're going to have a very tight little area. It probably looks something like this. Take a moment, pull up on your loop, and roll it back down over top of your finger. And now you've got the top part of the ear done. So we're going to continue working in the same direction. And we're going to repeat that little pattern we just did three more times. 
So you should have a total of six stitches all the way around. We're going to move from six to nine. We're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, single crochet once into the stitch after that. Do that three times total and you should be up to nine stitches. Believe it or not, we're up to row four. You should have nine stitches at the end of row three. For row four, you're just going to work a row of single crochet all the way around. And the easiest way to do this is to just count nine single crochet. You should still have nine single crochet at the end of row four. Don't worry about counting rows or anything too uh, much right now because it's a little offside. We're going to count, we're going to catch all that up at the end. So you should just have something that looks like this right now. We are now going to do another little increasing pattern. We're going to repeat this set three times. We're going to work two single crochet into the very next stitch. Single crochet once into each of the next two stitches and then repeat that twice more. Two, one, one, two, one, one. You should be up to 12 stitches now. For the last row of our ear, we're just going to work a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And the easiest way to do that is to count 12. We're almost finished with our little ear piece. We just want to even up the very bottom of our ear. So if you flip your little ear upside, sort of so that you're looking at the very, very peak, you should be able to identify where row one, this little tiny dot here, rolls into row two. See, it sort of turns into row two right there. That's the start stop that I like to use as my indicator. So I want my stitches to end directly in alignment with that piece. And if you've done it <laughs> along with me, that should mean that you're going to single crochet into each of the next four stitches. This won't change your stitch count. You'll still have stitch 12 stitches around the bottom of your ear piece, but just adding those extra little single crochets just evens up the bottom somewhat. That's it for the piece. You can leave yourself a nice long tail because we're going to be sewing the ears to our little sack. Slip stitch into the next stitch just to even things off. Fasten off. Nice long tail. And you want to go ahead and make two of those. Next, we're going to dress up the inside of our ears a little. We're going to give the inside of our cat ears a little bit of a pink, <laughs> a pink effect. So you're going to flatten your ear piece so that your tail is on one side or the other. doesn't matter. You can do one on one side and one on the other. You're basically going to pick one side of the ear to be the front. You're going to cut yourself a nice long pink tail of yarn or whatever color you want to use for the inside of your ears. Thread it up in your yarn needle, and then we're going to bring our needle up inside the ear, and we're going to bring it out through the middle of, you're going to count four rows up from the bottom, find some little space there that's about the middle of your ear, pull that yarn tail almost all the way through so that you've got a little bit of tail left over. You want to be able to keep your thumb on it. And now we're going to embroider straight stitches, long straight whip stitches between this point. So you're always coming out through this, this point up here and these bottom middle three stitches. So these three right here. And I like to just put my, my needle right through the bottom of that stitch or the edge of the stitch like you would if you were sort of crocheting right through there and then back out through the same spot. Try to keep your thumb on that little tail for the first few stitches at least so that it doesn't get caught up or want to come out the top. Don't pull too tightly. You don't want them to be too loose or too tight, but you don't want to run the risk of sort of changing or buckling the shape of your ear. Work three or four stitches through the bottom so through th three or four stitches through here in the middle point, and then through here in the middle point, and through here in the middle point. What we're doing is creating a bit of a triangular shape. So you'll see all of my threads, it's quite bulky up here, all come through the same space, but they're all worked through those bottom three middle stitches. And you can add in a few extra whip stitches at the end to fill in any little holes that you might have. But a good rule of thumb is to start with three or four running through each of those three points just to fill in that nice little triangular shape.
A nice little trick you can use if you want to make sure that all of your whip stitches are roughly the same length or, or um, tension is to slip your little needle underneath all of them. So slip them underneath them all and then gently pull up and run your needle back and forth maybe while you hold on to the bottom or the top and it will just sort of help even things out a little bit. Take your last stitch wherever you want to throw it go to the inside of the ear take out your needle grab that little short tail that you left at the very beginning knot your two ends together nice and tight you can trim any extra excess that you might have on your sewing yarn side and then just tuck what's left up into the ear because that's all going to disappear and it uh, serves as a little extra bit of stuffing so there you go, there's a little bit of a pink inner ear effect for our little cat ears. Go ahead and do that to both of them. Next we're going to make his eyes. So I've chosen green for my big cat eyes and we want to have a little black center. So we're going to start with the black. Grab your black yarn, you really don't need very much for this. We're going to begin with a cinch circle and I know I'm using black so hopefully by this point you can follow along with the black or the cinch circle and single crocheting into it. So you have your cinch circle, you're just going to work five single crochet into it. If you have trouble seeing with the darker yarn, then just slowly count out five. And that's all you need to worry about for this part of the eye. Once you have five single crochet, pull your short tail, cinch it up nice and tight. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet you made and that's it. You can fasten off, you don't need to leave much tail. And then you can either weave your little tails in back and forth around the back side of your pupil or if that's way too much <laughs> you can work over top of your short tails as we work the next part. So grab your eye color and we'll do that. We're going to begin with a slip knot for our eye color. We're going to join with a single crochet and we're going to join to the false stitch on our eye pupil. So I know it's a bit difficult to see, but if you're looking at yours, what you've got is where you fastened off. If you pull up on that little knot, there's a little stitch that sits right next to it. And if you counted five when you were single crocheting, if you were to sit here and count every single one of the stitches that round your eye pupil now, it would look like six, which is absolutely correct because you've got five stitches plus the false stitch. So we're going to use all of these stitches. We're going to go from a count of five up to 12, so don't be confused. You're going to join your yarn in the false stitch. So it's the little stitch that sits just to the right of where you fastened off. And when you join with a single crochet, you treat the loop, the slip knot on your hook as the sort of the working loop. Pick up a loop in that stitch so you have two loops on your hook and then just crochet them together. So that's joining with a single crochet. Now into each of those five stitches, one, two, three, four, five. I know it's hard to see, but you should have five stitches all the way around. You're going to work two single crochet into each of them. And if you're working over top of your little short tails, just take your time, find the stitch, stick your needle through it or your hook, sort of wrangle all those little tails and single crochet over top of them. And remember you're doing two single crochet through each of those stitches. When you've worked two single crochet into each of those five stitches, so there's the single crochet you joined with plus ten more, you'll be back to the false stitch that you joined in. So you've worked your last two single crochet, you're going to work one more single crochet into that same stitch that you joined with a single crochet in. So you're butting another single crochet right up against it. That closes in your eye nice and tidy. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of that single crochet that you joined with. And there you go. You have 12 stitches. You've made 12 out of 5, kind of a bit of crochet magic, and you should have a nice solid eye piece. Leave yourself a nice long tail because that's what we're going to sew our eyes to our little sack with. Fasten off. Go ahead and make two.
Now we're going to make its nose. So we're going to have fun with a little cinch circle in a way that we haven't really done before. <laughs> we're going to make a regular old cinch circle using our nose color. In this case, I'm using pink. So make a cinch circle, chain one to secure it. And now we're going to create a little angled triangle. We're going to work two single crochet into our cinch circle. We're going to chain one, work two single crochet into our cinch circle. Remember you're working over top of that little tail the whole time. Chain one, two single crochet into our cinch circle. Chain one, and that's it for the stitches. So you should have something that looks like this. Sort of innocuous enough, doesn't look very weird. <laughs> Grab your short tail, cinch the whole thing shut nice and tight, find that first stitch you made, and join with a slip stitch to it. So we're going to join, we're going to fasten off, you're going to leave a long tail so that you've got something to sew your nose down with. And you can do one of two things, you can weave that little short tail in across the back, you can trim it a bit and just stuff the rest of it under the nose while you're sewing. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter because that's not going to show too much. But what you should have is a little triangle. So you find those chains and you pull out on the chains a little bit. Maybe pinch them and you've got a little subtle triangular, rounded triangular nose shape happening. And there's its little nose. We've got one last little accessory to single to crochet here, and that's going to be his little tail. So grab your cat color again. We're going to start with yet another cinch circle. And once you've chained one to secure that circle, you're going to single crochet eight stitches over top of that short tail into that little circle. Once you have eight single crochet, cinch it up nice and tight. We're working in the round, so we're not joining our rows. You're going to work directly into the first stitch of every row, and you can just sort of shut your brain off for a little while. You're going to work 11 rows of just single crochet. So you're going to work single crochet in each stitch, no increasing, no decreasing, and you're just going to work straight for 11 rows, or until your little tail is as long as you like. Once you get through the first or second rows, you might find that it's curling up on you, which is exactly what you want it to do because we're turning this into a little tube. And it probably is going to curl towards you like mine is doing here. So once you've gotten all the way around for the first or second row of just straight single crochet, you just want to do what we did with the ears and roll it back over top of your finger and then continue single crocheting all the way around and that'll make it a little bit easier. It's like you're working around on the looking at the outside of the tail as opposed to sort of working around with the inside curling up at you. So just take a moment to bend it over top of your your finger and then you can continue single crocheting all the way around and around and around until your tail is as long as you like or 11 rows. I'm doing 11 rows. Once you've worked 11 rows and that will be somewhere near the, uh, the length of your index finger. You can just slip stitch into the next stitch and fasten off. Like I said, you can make your tail as long as you want. Make sure you leave a long sewing tail on your tail <laughs> so you can sew it to your sack. Fasten off, put it aside, and now we can start assembling our little pieces. We're going to sew the pieces on in this order. So nose first, then the eyes. We're gonna add the whiskers if you want then our little ears, and the last thing we're going to do is put on our tail and weave in our drawstring. So grab your noses and that's where we're going to start. First you want to grab your sack, find the back, which is easy to identify by where you fastened off at the top. Make that the back if you have to, you can sort of fold it in half, sort of eyeball it. That's going to be my front where I'm going to put my face. So I'm going to thread up the long tail on my nose. We're going to start with the nose, we're going to put it sort of position it in the middle front of our bag. You want to position it so that the little point of the triangle is facing down and where you fastened off is sort of facing upwards. You can pin it into place or hold it like I am and we're going to sew all of our pieces down by using that little method I like where you pick up 
a front facing loop on the bag and then you go through the entire edge of the stitch of the applique. And if you're holding it in place like I am, just stop every so often. Make sure that it's not moving. You always want it sort of pointing down. And just sort of slowly work your way all the way around the edge of your applique. Try not to stitch too tightly because you don't want to sort of warp the fabric of your bag or you don't want your stitches to look pulled or tight. Just slowly work yourself all the way around the outside edge of your applique, including the little chains that you made. So use all of the edge stitches. Pause every so often and make sure it's still facing in the right direction. Once you're done sewing on an applique, and we're going to use the same technique for all of our pieces, you just want to make a tiny little knot at the edge. So I like to run my needle underneath a loop or a stitch, make a little loop, take your yarn and pull it through that loop from back to front and then make it as tight up against your applique as possible. Then you're just going to re-thread your needle if it's come undone and you can push it sort of through to the outside Make sure if it's a piece like your eye that has different colored stitches in it that you're always going through the same colored stitches. And then you're just going to weave your tail in through some of those stitches back and forth just a few times because you've knotted it so it shouldn't want to come undone. This just kind of makes sure that your little tail will be woven in. And because it's the same color as your applique, it's not going to show. So I've woven it almost all the way around. I'm pretty sure that's not going to go anywhere can trim it and that's my little nose on. Now we're going to put on his eyes on either side of his little nose. You're going to use the same technique that you did for the nose to sew down both of your eyes. What you want to do is arrange them in place. I've already sewn down my first one but maybe pin them or hold them, flatten your bag down so you get an idea of what his little face looks like. You want to arrange them on either side of his nose and you can have them sit up higher or lower however you want. Try to make them as even as possible and then once you're satisfied you can pin it or hold it in place and just go around the entire outside of the applique sewing it into position. Next we're going to make his little whiskers and his mouth. I have a couple options for you. If you had a really long tail left behind on your nose after you finished sewing, you could bring the tail out through the bottom point of his nose and just embroider these three little short whip stitches. So it's one little stitch, you kind of hop over one row and then you do a little angled stitch on either side at the bottom of it. Then you can bring it back up and weave it in through the nose. That's if you had a long tail left over. You can also do the same thing with your whisker tail and this will create a sort of smaller little mouthpiece. If you don't want to put on whiskers and you do want to add a mouthpiece and you don't have enough leftover tail, just cut yourself a length of yarn and bring it in from the inside, or bring it out I should say, from the inside of your sack. So you would bring it out through here. So reach into the inside of your sack, bring it out at the bottom of your nose, and it might take a little poking around until you find it. So you'd bring it out right here and then you would embroider little short stitches in that angle. And then you can knot it and weave it in on the inside of your nose or your, or your bag. It doesn't have to be super neat and tidy. So that's three options to do the little mouth. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do my whiskers. So I've threaded up a long piece of embroidery floss. And I'm using embroidery floss because it's thinner. So you could use crochet thread here, embroidery floss, or a very thin yarn. If all you've got is more of the same kind of yarn and you want thick whiskers, you can do that too. I'm going to bring it out just to one side of the bottom point of my nose. And like I did with the embroidery on the ears, I'm not going to pull the, uh, the thread all the way through. I'm going to leave a tail behind that I can kind of keep my fingers on. And I'm going to embroider three long stitches. So I'm going to go up to just underneath the very middle of the eye and back out through that same place beside the, there we go, beside the nose. So there's one. 
I'm going to go one row below and back out through the same place. And then a third one, maybe a little longer, maybe a little shorter. It's entirely up to you, they're your whiskers. And instead of coming back out here, I'm going to hop over to the other side of his nose because I want to start those three over there. And I'm not pulling very tightly because I don't want to distort my bag. But I am pulling strong enough that the whiskers are tight against the outside. So there's that. And now you're going to want to try and mimic the exact same thing. So look at where you positioned the ends of your whiskers on one side and you're going to repeat for the other side. Once you've finished the last whisker on your second side, if you haven't already embroidered a little mouth like I'm about to, then bring your yarn out through the bottom of your nose. Skip down one or two rows and try to make that as straight a line as you possibly can. And then we're going to embroider two little angled, so I'm going to bring it out one row below and just a little to the right or left back out at the bottom and then same thing to match it on the other side. You're going to bring your thread or yarn or whatever you're using back to the inside. You're going to knot your ends together. Remember that little end that we left on the inside? You're going to knot your ends together, trim everything off, and you can weave in what's left on the inside of your bag. Try to weave it in behind your nose because then it won't show. And uh, not that the inside of your, it's going to be a little, a little messy on the inside, but if you're using embroidery floss or thread, it's not going to show up too much. The next thing we're going to do is put on his little ears. So this is going to feel a little counterintuitive, but remember, an open sack is not the same as a closed sack. So what you're going to do is you're going to flatten your sack so that your face is looking at you and you've completely flattened your sack. You're going to take both ears, and remember, I'm just going to show this to you, you're going to be sewing through both sides at the same time. So when you're sewing it down, make sure you're getting through both edges of your ear. Take both ears, make sure they're facing each other, so the inner ear part is facing in, they're facing each other, and you're going to position them on your sack so that they're facing each other. They sit just outside of your eyes, so not directly above it, just to the left or right of the eye. The top part of your ear will be touching the top part of the edge of your sack, and you're going to sew it in a straight line to the front of the sack going down. So your ears, and I'll show you on the purple one here, your ears are going to be facing each other, you're going to sew through both pieces at the same time and they are sitting straight up and down on the front of your sack facing each other. So the top edge is flush with the top edge of the sack and the bottom edge is down here somewhere near to the side of your eyes. So once you've got them positioned you can pin them into place or hold them like I am if you're a little more, a little more seasoned. You want it just outside of your eye. You want the top part of the ear touching the top part of the bag. It might be easiest to run it, see where there's a, an actual space. Maybe don't put it over top of the space. Put it just to the left or the right of that. And then you're going to use the same technique. You're going to pick up a piece of the front of the stitch, but you're going to make sure you're going through both parts, and I'll just get my needle here through it, both sides of the ear. And you're going to sew it down. Pause after every stitch if you need to, to make sure that your ear hasn't moved. And remember, you want it to be straight up and down. So both of them are going to be straight up and down, sewn to the top of your sack. Be sure not to sew through to the back. You don't want to accidentally sew your sack together. You
You want to sew fairly tightly so that your ear will stick straight out. And that's what it looks like sewn down. It sticks straight out. Remember the inside is facing in. It's just off side of my cat eye. And then you can do the same thing. You can make a little knot with your tail, but instead of weaving it back and forth, you can just pull it up into the inside of your ear. And that way it will just act as a little more stuffing and you don't have to worry about weaving it in. Once his ears are on, they should look like this. <laughs> so straight up and down and facing each other. We've got one more little piece to put on and that's his tail. So what you want to do is turn him around, flatten him if you have to, so you can try and find the direct back. And that should probably be somewhere underneath that little fasten off or just above your little bump in the row there. You're going to fat, find the tail on your tail, thread it up on your yarn needle, and then position your tail in the bottom middle. So just so it's flush with the bottom, not the actual uh, post row, but the row, so row eight, just above the post row. You want to position it, pin it down if you want to in the bottom, and just sew it on all the way around using the same technique. So top facing loop or loops of some stitches on the sack plus the top, the edge, full edge stitch of the tail. And you want to just keep squeezing it so that it's nice and round. And then just work your way around, sewing down your tail so that it eventually looks like this. And then of course you can bend your tail into these different positions and it'll kind of, <laughs> it'll, it'll take on a little bit of a quirky attitude because we haven't stuffed it. So that gives us the opportunity to kind of squish and twist it any little direction we want. And once again, once you've got your piece sewn on, you can make your little knot and you can either weave the tail in back and forth across some of those stitches or you can just push the whole thing up into the inside of your little hollow tail and then weave what's left of that tail back into the inside of your tail. It can act as a little bit of stuffing or if that's too troublesome for you, you can just trim any excess. Our little cat now has a face. He's got some ears. He's even got a little tail. Now we're going to put our drawstring in. So you can grab your ribbon or your cord, pick it up so that you're looking at the back, find one of the back spaces and you can poke your your cord or your ribbon in and then just work them in and out through those large eyelet spaces we made in the drawstring row. If your drawstring or your cord isn't too thick, you can also thread it up in your big eyed yarn needle and weave your needle in and out through those holes if you find that easier. But once it's all done, you can even out those two drawstrings, cinch up the top, and you see that our ears now sit on either side of our little rounded head. So they're right where they should be. And we've even got a little tail. And your little cat sack is ready for treats. And there we go. A little cat sack complete with tails. <laughs> just love these things. They're great for gift bags, treat bags, or just hiding little goodies that you want to keep track of around the house. They're super cute. They're really fun to give as gifts and um, they're fun to make too. I hope you had fun making these along with us today and we will see you soon here on the Jade and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week everybody. Bye! Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.